Hello, folks. Uh, I'd like to tell you 10 things I love about church. Now, I grew up as an atheist. My parents are atheists, blah, blah, blah. Scots hate God because the English like God. So they do everything. Like Canadians and Americans, they do most things out of spite. So they want to do whatever the big guy downstairs is not doing. And British people like Christmas, so Scottish people like Hogmanay. They like New Year's Eve. And um, they feel the same way about Christianity. So I'm new to this thing. But the inevitability of the universe and the fact that my daughter's heel works made me realize after my children were born that there is a God. Now, as far as the minor details go, sure, there's some overlap there. I don't think Buddhists are going to hell because they got it wrong. Um, but I'm a newbie here. And at church, I'm just sort of looking at everyone else and trying to get this thing right. You end it on your right shoulder, what? And then there's the, the water thing. I notice I'm just sort of following along like something out of Coneheads trying to blend in. And I love it. It's really interesting, too, as, as a newcomer to Christianity, how misinformed I was about what goes on there. I heard that you sit there and you talk about how your pets are going to heaven and there's no such thing as dinosaurs and the earth is 3,000 years old and all gays are evil and they're going to hell and you get to meet your friends. And then people take this trivialized straw man version of it and they go, I don't believe in that dumb thing about the guy in the sky, what, Santa Claus? I actually used to call him Santa Cloud facetiously. Uh, that, that doesn't come up. What comes up is interesting philosophy and stories that go back thousands of years. I mean, the, the Bible was amassed with tales that went way back, patterns they had noticed. And I really see those patterns as describing evolution. And, uh, you know, things like don't kill. We tried killing. It doesn't work out. So that's going to be in there. Anyway, all these great lessons that humans have figured out over time. But uh, here's my 10 favorite things about sitting in that room for an hour every Sunday and recalibrating yourself. And number one is there's this part where they go, now this is a Catholic church, but I'm sure yours is similar. They go, peace be with you. And I get a little, I become a bit of a fag uh, during this and will occasionally almost cry because they, you have to turn around to someone next to you and go, peace be with you, and you shake their hand. Or you just you shake some old lady's hand, some withered old hand, some little kid, peace be with you. And you're sitting in a room of strangers, and then everyone turns around and says that. And it's, it's a stark reminder that we're all just really just trying to get along. We're trying to get through the day. And in this, this bleeds it leads media mentality where everyone is evil and everyone's out to get you. And you have to be dubious of the Democrats and the Republicans are racist and all this stuff. You forget that everyone is basically like you, and we really just want everyone to be doing okay. Even the worst bureaucrat on earth is a good person at heart. He's just got it wrong. In fact, you could argue that bureaucrats and the government are people who have strayed from God. Because what are you doing when you're enforcing tax laws and saying, I'm going to take your money and put it over here? You're playing God. So, in a way, the government is blasphemy. Uh, number two, it's a lot like sex. In that, after you're done, you feel more connected to humanity. You know when you bone your wife, uh, it feels nice and everything, but then you're walking down the street the next day and you're sort of like, we're part of the cosmos, we're breeding. It's been a quarter of a million years we've been doing this as homo sapiens. I'm one, the singularity is near, we are as one. You feel that with church. You feel like you're part of your community. And it's a hard uh, feeling to articulate, but it really is sort of a symbiosis with your fellow man that's refreshing. Number three, it's nice. In a world, especially my world, which is neck tattoos and fart jokes and constant double entendres, sexual entendres and, and irony and, and, and sarcasm constantly dripping with, with cruelty. <laughs> I mean, my life is mostly humor, and as John Cleese said, every humor deep down is somewhat mean-spirited. It's nice just to go to a room once a week and have no irony. There's, there's no gross things. There's no fart jokes. There's no anal. <laughs> it's just a place where we focus on the good. And the fact that that, that has to be narrowed down to an hour a week is sad, but it's also a good bare minimum. It's sort of like birthdays. People go, why do I got to buy you a birthday present just because you were born? No, it's just a way to get a bare minimum number of presents out there. You should be buying stuff at Christmas. I know Santa brings most of the presents, kids, but you should buy some. And the fact that we have these traditions are just sort of a bare minimum. Your life should be nice, 
But if it's not, let's try to at least have an hour a week that's nice. Number four, it's beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful in a church that I'm almost dubious of the craftsman. You start to think about divine intervention. <laughs> I'm serious. Look at the way these things are carved. I could just see the craftsman. It's almost like God just sort of went and imbued him with extra skills. He was probably carving these, these stone tablets or whatever. I don't even know what the half the thing is made of. Masonry? What is all that stuff? I, I feel like he probably felt like he was on Adderall. And he just went, Jesus Christ, I'm really... No, he wouldn't take the Lord's name in vain. He went, holy cow. I'm re oh, no, holy's bad, too. He'd go, fucking shit. Uh, I'm really carving this well. I've never carved this well. I'm really m nailing this stained glass thing I'm working on. It's almost like someone is helping me. It's almost like there's a force out there, a force of nature that's been carrying us on since the earth began 3.5 billion years ago. Yes, you're allowed to say that at church. Catholicism and science are actually friends. Didn't know that until I got there. Number five, it makes you philosophical. And this goes back to the nice thing. It's like smoking your joint in the bath or doing heroin, but without the heroin. And you sit there and you start thinking about stuff. And, and I, my brain will go to places it never went before. And that's really refreshing and, and healthy. Like I had this doozy the other day in church. What if we're in heaven? You're allowed to think such thoughts. You see, every time people say, oh, uh, heaven, yeah, yeah, you wear a white dress and you have wings and you play a harp. And I go, no, that's our really primitive interpretation of this crazy thing that we can't even articulate. It's unfathomable what it is. Imagine us as just sort of floating gases up there. It is so different from Earth that I can't describe it or even imagine it. It's just like the universe it's, it is infinite. I can't imagine infinity. It's over my head, literally. And then I thought, wait a minute. If there's one thing that's unfathomable, it's if you were a sperm and you were unborn and then you became born and you're a dude talking to a TV monitor with a striped tie on, right? That's very different. So maybe the sperm us, the non-born us, was us. Then we died when we were born and then we went to heaven, which is earth. This is the kind of stuff that goes through your mind in church and you go, that's interesting, me. What else you got? <laughs> um, number six. It makes you appreciate your life. Now, all religions are like this. I've been to a lot of Indian ceremonies because my wife's into that kind of stuff. And uh, by the way, a little side note here. My wife is the one who got me into religion in a way because I was, we were moving into an apartment when we were dating and she, was, she had some, I don't know, rosemary thyme, some shit she was burning. I still don't know what it was. And I realized I don't know her religion. I know she goes to p powwows and she's in a teepee for three days when someone dies. I don't know if she's Native American church, if she's... And I, it's not my business, uh, so I don't ask. Indians are very private about their religion. And I thought, yeah, why is our shit on the chopping block? Like, why do we have to talk about, oh, I believe this is going to happen to gays, and this is going to happen to Buddhists, and I believe Jesus was born at this time, and not at Christmas, and blah, blah, blah. We're always being interrogated, whereas everyone else, you know, when women are menstruating, they're not allowed in a teepee. No one calls that sexist, but Christians have to bake a cake for everyone. It seems like Christianity is under undue scrutiny, as are white males for some reason, maybe because we uh, tolerate that kind of questioning. But anyway, I thought, yeah, I'm going to have my own religion, Christianity, and I'm not going to tell anyone about it. I'm never going to do videos, for example, that say 10 reasons why I love church. But yeah, in Indian culture, it's a lot of like give thanks to the north, to the west, to the east, to the south. And they do that in church too, in Christian churches. Thanks, gratitude. Let's take a moment of gratitude. And, <clears throat> you know, the serenity prayer is a big part of that. And you, you go home and you're looking at your kid and he's being super cute and he's got some dumb magic trick where he goes, check this out, dad. Okay, I can turn this into this. Watch. And he goes, you see this? It's this. Now, that's a shitty magic trick, and I know how you did it. But after church, I look at that, and I think, oh, he's not going to be this naive uh, for very long. What a gift it is to be able to watch this. I'm almost tearing up talking about it right now. Whew. You see that? You see what it does to you? It makes you alive again. Number seven, uh, it cures your hangover. A big part of why you're hungover is because you indulged yourself last night. That's what booze is. You're indulging. And you know four drinks, five drinks is a normal buzz, but you keep doing shots and you overdo it. And then the next day, your answer to this self-indulgence is more indulgence. You sit and you binge Netflix or you watch eight hours of shows picking your balls. Maybe you masturbate or something and pick your nose and, ugh, you're disgusting in your Budweiser PJs. When you get up and you go to church, you sort of go... 
All right, all right, enough indulgence. Let's sort of recalibrate here. And yes, you're still in pain, but you're back into the world. You're, you're refocused and you're out of this me, me, me thing that got you into this drunken mess in the first place. Which brings us to uh, number eight, right? Yes, number eight is Latin Mass. When you go to Latin Mass, you don't understand a word they're saying, and it's meditation. And then you realize, wow, the church was doing so much good, and then we got rid of it. Atheism became cool. And now what do we do? Oh, Madonna's into some thing, Jewish thing, where she puts a red thread around her wrist. Or you, you talk to some atheist comedian who says, yeah, I had a lot of trouble with my temper, so I'm doing meditation now. Yeah, that's Latin Mass. Oh, I, I got too drunk, so I had to go to rehab. How long is it? Uh, it's 40 days. Yeah, that's Lent. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing my psychiatrist. I'm an atheist, but I have a lot of mental things, so I have to talk to this guy and confess to him my sins, and uh, he helps me atone for my sins. Yeah, that's confession. So we had all these things. We abolished them, sabotaged them, because we had a better idea, and here we are with this sort of makeshift version of Christianity trying to rebuild what we just tore down. And that's what I love about Latin Mass. And you see this too with hunting. You're sitting there waiting for a deer for three hours, and it sounds really boring sitting in a in a bush with a gun or a bow and arrow. And it is so serene. I've done both hunting and heroin, and they both have the same kind of endorphins when you finally do see the deer or when you finally do that line. You're, <laughs> you know, snorting a lot of heroin. You, you just reach this beautiful serenity that you realize God has already put in our DNA. You don't need drugs for it. Uh, and that brings me to number nine, uh, is when everyone's there, you're showing the community that you care that you're trying. Now, we know you're not perfect, we know you're a sinner, but when other people see you at the grocery store, what you've said to your area is, I'm in it to win it here. I, I fucked up and I, I did this wrong and I did that wrong, but I'm determined to make it better. And by the way, I feel the same way about fashion. When I see someone wearing pajamas or Crocs, I just think we were gifted this thing, especially young people when they're at their peak of beauty and they're just wearing pants they found in the garbage and you think, can you just participate, please? I know it's not important necessarily, but there's a Monopoly game out. Roll the dice, get involved, you know, try. It's just so, you're sitting around in pajamas watching Netflix and you think someone handed you this miracle. I mean, the odds of you being born are unfathomably small. And you're just like, eh, big deal. Church is the opposite of that. Church is trying. Which brings me to number 10. My 10th favorite thing about church which I uh, have to come up with on the spot because I seem to have only written nine. So I'm going to ask God to imbue me with number 10. <laughs> number 10 is it shows you that history was right. You're sitting in this tradition that goes back thousands of years and you realize I don't just have a kinship with my community. I have a kinship with cavemen. I have a kin kinship with all of man. This tradition exists for a reason. We're all connected. We're all one. Why are we here? We're here to breed. So yes, life is short. Yes, you die. But you're part of this beautiful chain which is so sad that people don't have kids and people are atheists and people are over it and people trivialize life and trivialize the universe and think nothing is a big deal because we've been imparted this incredible gift and church reminds you that you're not the first person to get this gift. You're one of billions and billions of lucky people who are alive. Thanks for that, God, and thanks for church. Hi, folks. That was a Rebel Media short. I have my own show on Rebel Media called How's It Going? You gotta pay for that one. Check it out right here.